And it says, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and of truth. When God was speaking to our heart about this meeting, you know, and he said Jesus revealed, you know, initially we were wondering, okay, fine, how does this translate to every believer's experience? But if you find out what we read in the verse 3, by him was everything made and nothing was made. There was nothing made that didn't come through him. When Jesus is revealed to you, he creates everything. In the book of Genesis, when God was speaking, he said, and God made the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God hovered upon the face of the waters. And God said, John chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So when God said, let there be light, the word that came out from the mouth of God was Jesus Christ himself as the expression of God at that time. Now, God did not want that to remain the experience we had, which was just what we believed we heard. And he now made the word flesh that dwelt among us. I pray for someone today in the name of Jesus that Jesus will be revealed to you. I say Jesus will be revealed to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. At different times when Jesus was revealed in scriptures. He revealed himself as the word of God. We've read that already in the book of John chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. He revealed himself as the word of God. At the second point he revealed himself as a teacher. John chapter 3 and verse 2. There are many of us here who are ignorant because we have not experienced the revelation of Jesus Christ as the teacher. Jesus Christ has the capacity to show you everything beyond what you can ever ask or think. Whatever form of darkness you have in your life right now can be dispelled by the revelation of Jesus Christ. What is even the word revelation? What is the word reveal? It means to open, to expose to illuminate, to bring forth. And that is what Jesus Christ does when he teaches us. He opens up to you a side that you probably never knew existed. He opens to you a dimension you never knew existed. He opens your eyes to see beyond the things you can ever think existed. How many of us have been in situations where we wonder, is there a way out of this? And then you say, Jesus, step in. And then there is light. If you've had such experience, you will understand that the power that comes with revelation is beyond just action. It is an experience. I pray for someone here today. You will see Jesus as your teacher. I say you will see Jesus as your teacher. In the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus reveals himself, he reveals himself as an answer. If you look at the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Mark chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Please, can I have that up on the screen? Then he came to Bethsaida, and they brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. Go on. So he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes... And put his hands on him. He asked him if he saw anything. And he looked up and said, I see men like trees walking. Hold on there. Many of us are in that place where Jesus is asking you, what do you see? And you are still seeing men like trees walking. He's seeing something, not so. But that is not all that God wanted for him. God did not just want him to be healed. God wanted him to be whole. Is somebody with me? God does not just want you to be healed. He wants you to be whole. 
I'm praying for someone here today. Your expectation coming here was healing. I said the Lord will make you whole in the name of Jesus Christ. You have come with your own bucket for healing. The Lord is giving you a river of wholeness in the name of Jesus Christ. Go on. And verse 25. Verse 25. Then he put his hand on his eyes again and made him look up. And he was restored and saw everyone clearly. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that that question, that problem that you seem not to have a solution for, the Lord will touch you tonight and he will show you himself as the answer in the name of Jesus Christ. When Jesus reveals himself, he dispels darkness. John chapter 1 and verse 4 says, in him was life and the life was the light of men. In him was life and the life was what? The light of men. When the light shines in darkness and darkness comprehends it not. I listened to a sermon earlier in the week and the man of God said that many of us have become so used to darkness. As in, he said that his light bulb went out. And when his light bulb went out, for many weeks, he didn't fix it. And he suddenly started finding his way through the darkness. For the first few weeks, he was hitting his legs. But after a while, he got used to darkness. That he could actually pick his shirt in the dark. He could wear his tie in the dark. He was used to darkness. And he remembered and he said, oh, let me call the electrician to fix this light. He said, after the light was fixed, two weeks after, he did not turn on the light. Why? He was used to darkness. I pray for someone here today that you have been used to being average. You are used to being the rejected. You are used to being the dejected. You are used to being the neglected. You are used to being the one that is walked over. The light is shining your way today in the name of Jesus Christ. I say light is shining your way in the name of Jesus Christ. You have to be expected. He turned on the light and he said, ah, ah, how could I have been in a space where there was light? It's not the case of where there was no light source. It's not Nepal that took the light. It was him that did not know or did not remember that the light has been fixed and to turn on the light. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. I'm praying for you in this house this morning. Whatever form of darkness that has existed before today, light is coming over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something. When light comes, darkness has no choice. It recedes. If you put off all the lights in this room, darkness is prevailing. Once you put on the light, darkness automatically comes under. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. As Jesus reveals himself to you as the light, darkness comes under in the name of Jesus Christ. Darkness comes under in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not walk in darkness anymore. You will not walk in ignorance anymore. You will not walk in confusion anymore. You will not walk in dejection anymore. The Lord opens your eyes to see today in the name of Jesus Christ. I can't hear a believing amen. I can't hear a believing amen. When Jesus is revealed, he transforms. If you look at the story of Peter in John chapter 18 from verse 13 to 27. John 18, 13 to 27. Peter was a man that was walking with Jesus Christ and he was timid. He did not even know what he carried walking side by side with Jesus Christ. But when Jesus Christ even denied Jesus, I'm sure many of us know the story. I was sharing with the workers yesterday. I said to them that, you know, for a man to say, I, I, I say, I swear, I've never met the man called Jesus. Do you imagine the kind of fear that would have been upon him for him to deny the one who he sat with, ate with, slept with, 
walked with, saw do wonders and miracles. And he said, I swear, I don't even have an idea who Jesus is. That is the man whose eyes, even though he was walking with Jesus, he never had an encounter with the one called Jesus. Many of you have been in the church. You have actually been in the workforce. You have been pulpit ministers. You have been everything you can call it. But you have never had an encounter with Jesus. And so it is easy for you to tell anybody, ah, can we put this Jesus aside for now? But when this same Peter in the book of Acts, this same man that denied Jesus three times, when he was at the point in the book of Acts chapter 2, 14 to 22, this same man that denied Jesus stood and preached after the Holy Spirit had come upon him and his eyes were opened. This same man stood and preached and 5,000 people were added to the kingdom of God. The same man that could say, I don't know him, could stand and say, men and brethren, I'm not careful for what I have to say. I say to someone here today, when Jesus will show up to you today, every iota of fear before now, every iota of timidity before now will disappear in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be that one that they will say, ah, we thought you were with Jesus. I said, no. Many of you are in this place. You know what I'm talking about. In your community, we cannot stand and call you man of Jesus because you can't even stand for Jesus. I do ask our people in the house. I say, if I come to your street and I say, oh, I'm coming to meet brother A, who is my Bible study teacher, what will be the testimony at that instant? Is Jesus revealed through you? Or is Jesus hidden through you? Like Peter did. He put God aside at that instance. I pray for someone here today that when Jesus Christ would encounter you today, your life will be transformed. I say your life will be transformed in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at the story of Paul, who was first called Saul, until he had an encounter with Jesus. He thought he was serving God. If you read the story of Paul, all through the book of Acts, he said he thought he was serving God. He felt he was doing the work of the master, whereas he was walking in darkness. Until he had that encounter in the book of Acts chapter 9, he never knew that his life was on the wrong path. He never knew his life was on the wrong trajectory. But the moment he had an encounter with God, he moved faster than even those who had a personal walk with God. I pray for you. You thought you have been ignored. You thought you are on the backside of town. You thought you are the one who is not preferred. Because of the encounter you will have with Jesus today, you will pursue, you will overtake, and you will recover all in the name of Jesus Christ. Before now, Paul was the one that was behind but this was the same man, by the time he was wrapping up his ministry, was called the chief of the apostles. When Jesus Christ meets you, he transforms you. He meets you where you are, but does not leave you where you are. Jesus meets you at the point where you need the most, but he doesn't leave you needy. He takes you from the point where you are and takes you to the point where you should be. Paul was a man that felt like he was doing the best of all. But when he met Jesus, he found out he was the worst of all. But Jesus did not leave him as the worst of all. He made him the chief of the apostles. I'm praying for someone here today. Because Jesus is in your boat, because the eyes of your understanding will be opened, you shall be transformed in Jesus' name. I say you are transformed in Jesus' name. You are transformed in Jesus' name. When Jesus is revealed, he brings the best. Is somebody with me? When Jesus is revealed, he brings what? The best. In the book of John, chapter 2, from verse 1 to 12, many of us know the story of the marriage in Cana. When Jesus is revealed, he brings what? The best. So you look at your life right now, you don't have anything to point to and say, this is what it is. 
But when Jesus comes in, the question will be, where have you been all this while? The question will be, where have you been all my life? They've picked and dropped you like toothpick. They've used and dumped you like tissue paper. But when Jesus Christ comes, he brings out the best out of you. He says, I will restore the years the locust and canker woman has eaten. The Lord is speaking to someone tonight. He is saying to you, I am bringing the best for you. 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 If you are that person who believes you are receiving from the Lord, can I hear you say a big amen? Amen. He gives you the very best. Jesus Christ was God's best to us. In the book of John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved us that he gave his only. When God was speaking to Abraham in the book of Genesis and he said, Give me your son, your only son whom thou love. It was literally a foreshadow of what God was going to do with Jesus Christ when he gave unto us his begotten son, his only precious son. And if God can give you his best in Jesus Christ, what else can he withhold from you? You need to believe that what God has for you today is more than what you've ever experienced. If God can give you his best, it's like a man who has a prized possession of, let's say, a, a chest of gold. And he has other things that if you add them all together, He's not up to that chest of gold. And he now gives you that chest of gold and says, take, it is yours. Now, he has given you what matters the most to him. Now, if you want to ask him for something else, do you think he will be of, of, of anything to him to live for you? Why? Because he has given you that which matters the most. God has revealed himself to us through his son, Jesus Christ. And I'm telling you today, if he has given you the best through which, which is his son, Jesus, there is nothing else that can be withheld from you. Mark 9 and verse 23. Mark chapter 9 and verse 23 says, if you believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Is there someone tonight who believes that Jesus is going to be revealed in their lives? Is there someone tonight who believes that their story is changing tonight? Is there someone here tonight who believes that this, this is not the end of my life? Is there someone here who believes that Jesus is going to be glorified through your life? If you are that person, rise up on your feet and let us pray this morning. And tell God, say, Father, tonight be revealed to me. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Tonight be revealed to me, O oh God. 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 Jesus 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 be revealed to me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. When Jesus is revealed,